so I think we all know restaurants or uh, places where to go to relax that really live off their reputation, right? Or maybe you've had the experience of you go out somewhere, you eat in a certain place or you buy a certain car make and, or you, you enjoy a certain sport or a certain golf course or a certain beach and you want to come home and tell everyone about it. So lads, you have to go to, to Ardmore Strand. Absolutely lovely. It's clean and it's beautiful and the sunset and the ships and the seals and whatever else. Or you go to a certain restaurant, lads, I recommend the desserts. Whatever you do, get the debt by chocolate and two scoops of vanilla ice cream. Or like, I've always driven forward now, never had a problem. And with these kind of things, when we've had the experience of something, we've no, not only no problem sharing it, we actually like sharing the good experiences that we've had. So someone else might benefit from it as well. Right, there's, a, there's a restaurant um, I visited in, in Naples. It's called the Michele. All they sell, they sell one thing, one thing, just one thing, one thing. They sell margarita pizza, and that's it. That is it. And the lads inside, the big pizzaioli guys, are flat out making nothing but margarita pizza, and there'll be a queue outside the door. It's, fam it's, it's famous in Naples, right? Because like some might argue they actually invented it. I think it's kind of stretching it. But anyway, the pizza is nice, but it absolutely lives off their reputation because everyone who goes there tells their friends and invites their friends and on a Saturday night, as I say, queue young people out the door just for the Michele uh, Margarita pizza. Okay, so once we've had the experience of something, we want to share that experience. Especially, I would think, if it's a good experience. You want people to, to have good experiences, to, to shop in good places, buy good cars, enjoy their holidays. Okay. In our reading today, uh, St. Paul makes a very interesting point, and uh, as with a lot of our readings, when you, when you read through it kind of quickly, you might not necessarily pick up on the detail here. Uh, there's two things here that I want to hone in on, if I may. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a gentle Father. Did you hear that when we just heard it five minutes ago? We, it, it says in the reading here, a gentle Father. And the God of all consolation. Okay, so two points there. Gentle Father, God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can offer others in their sorrows the same consolation that we have received from God. Okay? So, we have a sorrow. We experience God's consolation. And then it's our job, having experienced this consolation, to pass on that experience my dear friends, if you want consolation, go to God. I did, and it was great. Just like, lads, if you're really, really hungry, go to the Michele, good pizza. I did, and it was great. Same kind of idea. You have the experience of something, and then we pass it on. But not only can we, or is it nice to pass it on, I think in some way we have a responsibility to pass on these graces that God has given us. Okay? who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can offer others in their sorrows the consolation that we have received from God ourselves. It's, it's an interesting idea which uh, I heard Father Paul, the founder of my community, say once and it just really, really helped me. He said that all the gifts we've been given, they're not given to you for you. Any grace that you've been given isn't given just for you. You know, if you've been healed of something, okay, that it's not just so now your, 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 your bad knee or your, your hip or whatever it was is now healed and now you can go boast about how healthy you are. And when everyone else is getting hip replaced and say, oh, I got mine healed, you didn't. You know. No, if you've been granted the grace of a healing, that's actually, while it's, yes, in part for you, it's also so that you can give back and say, the Lord healed me. I trusted in him. And he healed me. I brought my, my sorrow to him for consolation and he healed me. And now with this healthy leg, I want to walk. <laughs> I want to be a disciple. I want to preach. I want to testify to what God has done for me. Every gift, like if you have the grace of being able to sing, that's not just for you in the shower in the morning. It's, for, it's a gift to be able to lift people's hearts in sometimes in, in, in sorrow, like some, a lot of the old Irish singers, your Luke Kellys and that, they could rouse up an owl fight with, in, in, in a couple of lines. Um, but like so often, like music can rouse up passion and, and sadness. All the Shan Nose songs, just so, so sad. 
and uh, or rouse up a kind of a, a, a joy or a love song. All this, so music is given to us to, to inspire. It's not just given to you for you. It's given to you for the glory of God, for the, the building up of his kingdom, for the, the healthy entertainment, if you will, of his people. So all, all gifts, if you have intellectual abilities or artistic abilities or sport abilities, all these things are given to us for the greater glory of God. You know, so I, I might win a medal, like Katie Taylor, and say, I'll just, just, she's a great dub, isn't she? So, uh, you know, that, that, that when even in, in her victories, she thanks God. So all graces that we've been given to for, for that appear to be just for ourselves aren't just for ourselves. Now that we've experienced consolation or healing or joy or whatever it may be, we, we, we return all of this to the God of all consolation. What an amazing title. How did we skip these lines for so long in Ireland? The church in Ireland, how, how, this is in scripture for the last 2,000 years. How didn't we know this? How didn't we hear this? Because I don't think if you asked in the 1950s, give me a name for God, that people would have said, oh, God of all consolation. No, they'd say a just judge is what they would have said, more than likely. But not God of all consolation. What the water? And a gentle father. A gentle father. So you can imagine, like, if you have a little bit of imagination at all, God as a gentle father consoling his little child who falls or hurts themselves. And he, and he picks them up and he dusts them off and a bit of pseudo cream and a bit of a plaster and a glass of flat seven up just in case. And then this child has now experienced the love of God, the love of his father. So then in school, when someone says, oh, your daddy, yeah, he's, he's useless. He, he, I'm sure he's always busy at work and doesn't actually care about you at all. You say, no, no, I, I've had the experience of his consolation. My dad's a good dad. He's a consoler. He takes care of me. Why, is it, why, does, why do we find it so hard to, to take an image like that and, and transfer it to our relationship with God? You know, if, if uh, we can imagine our dads doing it, imagine God the Father doing it. A gentle Father, the God of all consolation. It's a divine word, we just heard it. So I think so often scripture kind of shakes us up or kind of wakes, hopefully, wakes us up to reevaluate how we see God. And, and has this, this word penetrated my heart? So firstly, that God is a gentle father. And secondly, that if we have received consolation or grace or healing, I now have a kind of a responsibility to testify to that, to witness to that out in the world. And we know, especially today, that the world needs an awful lot of consolation. It needs joy and it needs hope. So where are they going to get it? Because if he's the God of all consolation, that means every other apparent consolation isn't a consolation. Everything else is fake. You know, if you think that I'll be consoled if I can go to holidays in Spain. Okay, you go to holidays in Spain, it's not bad. You come back and after a week, same old, same old. Whereas you develop a relationship with God and that can carry us through in, in a way that we can't even imagine. Interestingly as well, it also says, when we are made to suffer, it is for your consolation and salvation. It's a, a, almost a pa paradox there. When we are made to suffer, it is for our consolation and salvation. So the Lord doesn't say, doesn't promise us here that crosses won't come our way. He doesn't promise us that everything is going to be okay, but that, was, that everything is going to be easy, but that he will always be a gentle father who will console us in, in the crosses, should they come, which they more than likely will. So he doesn't say, follow me, and you will have no crosses, no pain, and no suffering. But he says, follow me, and you will have all consolation. And so that's, a, that's something that I think we can, we can believe and should resonate with us that I've prayed and yes, crosses still come my way. So the Lord never said though that 
come follow me and there'll be no yoke at all. But he says, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Because with the Lord's consolation, we can, we can carry whatever he entrusts to us. We can. And so we ask the good Lord today to reveal himself to us, to, that the Father may reveal himself to us as a gentle Father and the God of all consolation.